When an airplane approaches the coast of Honduras, the first sight is often Utila. This beautiful island is surrounded by coral reefs. They started attracting foreign divers around 1990. The growing tourism led to the migration of Hondurans from the mainland. They were looking for jobs. As a result, the population has multiplied and the pressures on the environment have increased. The same has happened on many other islands around the world. Those who have seen Utila in its pristine state have observed the changes preoccupied. There are many challenges. With the big influx from the mainland of poor people, it's very hard to enforce. Because they, they, they need to, to go out to get their fish to eat. Real estate, of course, has done a lot of not so environmental friendly things like cutting down huge areas, beach areas especially. I mean, there's an area even so the coconut trees being cut down. The coral, well, you still have the formations. Well, of course, the fish population has drastically decreased. Shark population has decreased. Environmental education is clearly needed. Luckily, there are those who do it. To try to get to every group of the island, you know, to, to educate and give them this thought of protection or resources. Nowadays, tourism here is not only scuba diving. Still, the coral reefs and the National Marine Park are major attractions. The reef looks beautiful. There are lots of healthy looking soft corals. Also the colonies of the Elkhorn coral look attractive. Nevertheless, hardly any fish can be seen. Overfishing seems likely. When we look at the stony corals, the real reef builders we notice that most of them are dead. There are many reasons for this. The most recent being the Caribbean white stony coral tissue loss disease, which is difficult to stop. The underlying reason for the bleaching of this colony might be the climate change. In some places the bottom is covered by cyanobacterial mats. They indicate nutrient runoff from land, harmful to the corals. Luckily, mooring buoys protect the reef from both anchors and further damage. As regards the nearby seagrass beds, important to reef ecology, they look healthy. The same can be said of the mangrove area facing the reef. But within the mangroves, there is plastic waste. Many of the objects drift here from other countries. Clearly, Caribbean-wide cooperation is necessary. Luckily, recycling already takes place in Utila. What might be needed here is an understanding that hurricane waves can take to the coral reef the rocks used to expand the shore area. Shoreline extension also results in coastal erosion in neighboring areas. What about sewage treatment? How many of the buildings in Utila do have an efficient system? Maybe 20 percent. I think we're going to have to put in small treatment plants, uh, decentralize. Freshwater availability is a common survival issue on tropical islands. What about Utila? Two of our wells already dried. So we're using a lot of water and uh, it's not being put into the ground. You know, we don't get enough rain to be able to put it back in there. So our water table, you know, has dropped. In the rainy season, we don't have to use the wells because we collect enough water to survive on rainwater. So in the future, that's what's going to happen. 
the desalination units, you know, uh, we haven't been able to operate, even though we have one on the island, uh, because it's too expensive to operate with electricity. So we have to put maybe a solar uh, system to generate power during the day that we could make, you know, six, eight hours of water. The challenges in the environmental management of a tropical island are many. In any case, it is our duty to preserve the beauty for the future generations.